Hey guys, thank you for joining us in the new year. Mr. Quinn and I have, have been hard at work making new and exciting content for all you lovely people. We will be returning to Doctor Who and other se series eventually, but for now we wanted to ease back into things with like some smaller projects, so we decided we were going to do a few movies. And the first movie we picked was one of the best indie darlings of 2019. My very, very favorite movie of the year, and probably this year, unless I watch something else I like more, which I highly doubt it. And we watched the lovely little Netflix indie darling called Klaus. So, as KT there already said, it was distributed by Netflix, uh, specifically for the holiday season. It was created by Spa Studio and co-directed by Sergio Pablos and Carlos uh, Martinez Lopez. Yeah, it came, out, yeah, it came out last year, 2019. It came out in, like, November, so they managed to cram it out before the holidays. This is a good release, but I didn't watch it until... <laughs> I, think, like, I think I watched it, like, Christmas Eve. Like, I forced myself to sit down and watch that movie on Christmas Eve yep. because I was like, I'm not going to miss watching this movie after Christmas because then I'm going to feel like an asshole. <laughs> and I, I watched it, what, like, five days ago? How many days ago yeah. was that? It was probably like a week ago, cause yeah. cause you sent me your tumult. <laughs> I want to read the the oh my god, that's gonna be so far back. I want to read the the Instagram the Facebook conversation we had about oh, it. Oh yeah, and I feel so bad for the third party in our chat. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically it was basically Xander said watching class. I said sweet bean and sent him a beautiful picture of Jesper. And about an hour and a half later, <laughs> Xander says Jesper just needed real daddy Klaus, and Klaus needed Jesper to replace all the babies he didn't have. KT replies, replies in all capitals, Jesper has a dad. His dad was shocked by dad hugging him. Post picture of dad. Dad is the best. <laughs> Hashtag too much spoilage. Followed by tough love creates adult confusion, all one word. KT, exactly, that doesn't make dad a bad person. Xander, which is why he needed Klaus, he can have two dads. I know, okay then. <laughs> KT then follows, but dad is hot, so I love dad. <laughs> then sends picture of dad and young Jesper, so hot. Uh, Being a good dad is so attractive. <laughs> and I just agreed. <laughs> you just agreed, because there's no point in trying to talk to me after that. <laughs> and, I mean, I, I find people with good parenting skills to be exceptionally attractive, so I Yes, I do I as well. I disagree. <laughs> so we, we essentially talk. just agreed to agree. <laughs> While yelling at each other in all caps. Yes. Oh, poor, poor Blaze. Yeah. <laughs> she, she don't understand. She'd be all right. <laughs> she was so confused. So... She asked, like, "What was that?" And I was like, "It, it, it was a movie reaction. It's fine." She was like, I, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I mean, the easiest thing to talk about, I mean, this gear, it's obviously, it's an animated film, it's done entirely digitally, and it's all, like, 2D hand animation techniques, and all that, so, the story isn't much to write home about, but it is still a really good, solid story, and I don't particularly want to talk much about the story, mm -hmm. because it's so simple, and it's just one of those nudies that you really need to, like, just experience because it's like it's really fun it's really lighthearted. it's very cute and it's like you just you just need to sit down and watch it but i guess we can just do a basic synopsis yeah so i mean the the general summary of the story would be um that the uh son of postmaster general is sent to this tiny little island where you know, everyone's kind of at odds, and no one has any any kind of positive spirit, be it, you know, town spirit, uh, holiday spirit, they've got nothing. They hate everything and each other. Um, and uh, so this, this spoiled brat has to create some, some kind of, you know, postal system that works. Um, in this town that hates everyone and therefore does not send letters. So, it's...
it's also about how the story of Santa Claus happened. Yeah, and it's and to interrupt you real quick, it's probably my favorite origin now. I would agree with that. Because it's so it's so like how oh, what's the word I'm trying to do? It's so subtle and so not basic, but another word. It's organic. It, there's it's organic. There's no religion. There's no like emphasis on like where they're from. There's no emphasis on like what like the origin is it like because this the thing that I love the most about this world is it's like like Easter it's like European mm -hmm. in some way but it's not like the actual world and so it's a very organic story that just kind of is like well it, it this is how it happened mm -hmm. <laughs> you know there's yeah and I really love that there's just nothing religious in it yeah it's it it kind of keeps the the kind of like pseudo it's kind of like a modernized version of the like pagan origin of santa claus where he was just kind of a guy yeah it, it, but they made it kind of fit more into like what a real world version would be right so like it, it's it's kind of like they sat down and said all right we're going to create an alternate universe it's going to be eastern european but we're not going to have a super heavy focus on that and um we're gonna have you know this this just real simple clean organic uh story of santa claus um and they execute it wonderfully um yeah i've watched the movie one time now uh katie's watched it a couple of times I watched it two and a half times, like specifically two and a half <laughs> times. The third time I watched it, I like a halfway through, <laughs> like literally, I was at the halfway point. Yeah. But I've seen odds and ends like a bunch because I've seen all the animation reels and things like that, mm -hmm. and the pencil tests on. So I've probably seen the movie three times. Okay, and I I specifically made the decision to only watch it once before doing this podcast, uh, yeah. primarily because. We had a preliminary discussion about um, the pacing of the story, and yeah. um, the first time that we watched it, both of us felt that the pacing was top-notch for the first two-thirds of the film, and then the final third felt a little rushed, um, but when KT went and re-watched it, I think you felt mm -hmm. differently. Yeah, like, the issues I was actually having weren't there. And I think it's because I already knew the story, so I wasn't having to take in all the new information. I think that helped the, the pacing kind of settle down a bit. Like, the movie felt slower the second time I watched it. Mm -hmm. And it's really because the first the first time you watch it, because the energy is so, because it's filmed, because it's done on ones, and I'm not even going to explain what that is. <laughs> the animation people will. That means, that means that it's, it's, it, there's a lot of animation going on. There's a lot of movement going on. And because it's filmed on ones, it, sometimes it can feel fast. And because of like the sound design and the music and everything like that, and because of the way the story beats are done, the first and second act feel really organic. And then the third one, that beginning, the, the first half of the third act <laughs> feels really rushed. Like, it's just a lot of little bits and pieces mm -hmm. that just kind of happen. And then the second half of the third act happens, which is the finale of the movie. But the second time watching it, I didn't have that issue because I already knew what was going to happen. And I was I just kind of, it was easier for me to take in the scenes. Yeah. More so. Because this movie really is, because the story is so basic. Like, Brat Kid gets sent off to Island, has to deal with, has to find a way to make a successful post office, and then, and then Santa Claus. Like, because the story is so basic, watching it the first time, you're like, oh, that was a good nudie. That the second time you watch it, you get to enjoy the smaller scenes. So you get to enjoy the dialogue more, you get to enjoy, like, the, the the actual, like, photography and the cinematography and how the camera works, because this nudie has a lot of really good camera work in it. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, so the second time watching it, it was just a lot better. It was a lot more to enjoy. Yeah. It was a lot more enjoyable. So I do, 
I do recommend if anyone had that issue, like if you're a if you're a, a pretentious person like we are and you care about pacing and films <laughs> and nothing else and you can't watch a film if it's badly paced, then watch it again. Just watch, give it a second watch. Just put it on in the background or, you know, if you got kids, you know, watch it with your kids again because kids will watch something like 50 times and not get bored with it. Yeah. And you... And hopefully you won't have that same experience. Yeah, so I would recommend watching it again if you want to. Yeah, and honestly, even with the pacing issues, th this is still one of my favorite Christmas movies. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that from having watched it a second time and not experienced those issues again. Um, yeah, so I... it's definitely something I plan on watching again next holiday season. Um, I told my family Stop to watch me from it. Stop watching it. Huh? <laughs> I said that's not going to stop me from watching it. <laughs> this is a really good movie to look at. <laughs> it is really pretty. Um, mm -hmm. And one... we get to that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the the primary characters are um, Jesper or Jesper, depending on which character you ask. For the sake of clarity, we'll just call him Jesper Johansson because okay. I I think he calls himself Johansson. Then there's the boatman. Mogans. Yeah. Um, Mo Mogans. Then Alva, who's a school teacher. Yes, that's the school teacher lady. Um, and there's Klaus. <laughs> and then there's the little girl. Yeah, there's this. So basically, the main characters are just Rio Hansen, Klaus, Alva, the school teacher. And there's Margu, which is the little Sami girl. She's the most adorable thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And then you have the two heads of the clans. You have um, you have Mr. You have the Ellingbows, and then you have the Crumbs. The Ellingbows were the ones that had like red hair, and the Crumb had the dark hair. Yeah. And then you had the two, and the Sergio Paolo is the guy who did who directed who created the movie, <laughs> voiced the two big kids, <laughs> Pumpkin and Olaf. <laughs> That's the big girl. He's always like, mine. That's amazing. <laughs> he voiced both of those kids, and I was like, that's adorable. But yeah, so, I mean, I can, I mean, from, so this is, this movie's more my background because it's animation, mm -hmm. so I can pull from a lot of my well, but a lot of people have made this assumption that just for is just Cusco. He's Cusco from um, Emperor's New Group. Mm -hmm. But he is a better version of that character. And the reason I say that, and I'm not saying that Emperor's New Groove is a bad movie. I love that movie. I love Cusco. I think he's a fantastic character. But I know the tumultuous history of that movie. Mm. And so I know that that movie is basically just a very thin, like, veil of what it was originally going to be. But it's still a great movie. It's still very well animated. But just for his personality... Because he is such a brat, everyone has made that connection. But the thing that I love the most about Jesper is that he's not inherently a bad person. There's nothing that actually makes him a bad person. He's just very self-centered and egotistical. Mm -hmm. This is why I said the dad loves him, because there's no way he could have been as nice as he was in Smearinsburg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Without having a good... Because he is a very nice and respectful person. He just kind of has an attitude. <laughs> it, yeah, for sure. And I mean, like... Yeah. It, and he's so cute. Oh, and he's so cute. <laughs> it's it's like I said, it, it's obvious that Dad loves him. He just... He, he was inconsistent with how he showed his love when Jesper was growing up. Because it's very obvious that at one point Jesper was just spoiled rotten, and then suddenly there's, hey, you're an adult now, tough love, and you've got this, you know, confused adult who thinks he can get away with the same stuff, and he can't. <laughs> That's a little headcanon speculation, it's fine, though. <laughs> but it's very that, that is pretty psychologically sound. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, though. That's how I feel, but again... I don't want to put a lot of thought into this movie. <laughs> I don't want to put that. I mean, I don't want to put that much thought into this movie because it is a very simple, cute movie. But the yeah. thing that I wanted to say, because this is where I wanted to talk about, like, like, oh, do I want to talk about character design here? God, it's gonna be so hard because I love the character designs in this movie. 
I guess we could just move on a little. Yeah, so yeah, so that's just he's essentially Cusco. Mm -hmm. He's also voiced by Jason Schwartzman, which is a perfect like I can't imagine anyone else voicing that character now. Yeah, no, it was perfect. Like he he's a perfect character, and according to the um the character designer and the director, Jesper's original design was a throwaway. He was a throwaway character. They weren't gonna keep him as the main character. <laughs> And then they decided to, and I was like, good, thank you, because <laughs> he's a beautiful boy, yes. and I love him. But, I mean, going on to, like, um, going on, so you had, so Jester is very energetic, he's very, like, he's very much like a puppy, he's always got, he's very quick-witted, he always kind of knows what to say, he always knows what to do, you know, even when he's, like, freaking out, he manages to, like, collect himself, there's a lot of schadenfreude attached to his character, mm -hmm. which I think is really nice. Because he is kind of a brat, you know, having the shot in Freud makes him a little more enjoyable because he is a very bouncy, energetic character. Yes. And then you have Klaus, who is voiced by like J.K. Simmons. Again, very good choice of voice actor. Mm -hmm. Very great actor and voice actor. And Klaus is just a wall. He's just a mountain. He mm -hmm. doesn't talk. He barely says anything. You know, when he shows up, he's intimidating. He's fierce looking. But as the movie goes on, of course, you know, he opens up a little. He and Jesper become really good friends. And you see a paternal thing between them, but I don't. <laughs> I mean, it. I see dad friend. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I, is different I, from, from pure dad. Yeah. It's, it's difficult for me to think that because it's weird to say, but if Klaus had more dialogue... I would have started thinking that, but because he is so quiet and so reserved, I really did just see it as a friendship of these two people in these very unlikely worlds coming together and being friends where they wouldn't be friends in any other circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I mean, I can see Klaus fussing over Jesper, but not the way, like, a dad would. Right, and that's... Or, like, a dad friend. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, most of the dad friends in my life have been just very, like, I guess, gruff, um, gruff. and manhandly, which is, is how Klaus is. <laughs> Oh, I have to I have to bring up the first scene where they're kind of really together then the first time they deliver the package to the little kid in the big house. Yes. And Jesper's like, it's over there, just go over there and he just picks him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just I love how wiggly Jesper is and how they animate him. He's like a rubber band. He is <laughs> which he has rubber band fully from time to time, which I think is very <laughs> cute. But you said man handles like, well, this what happens to Jesper for like 90% of this movie because mm -hmm. he's such a tiny bean. He's so small. Yes. <laughs> he's such a small boy with his big butt. <laughs> yeah, because he does have a bubble butt. <laughs> yeah, he, he's because he's, 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 he's got a gut. He's a fat boy. Yeah. He's so, th he's so cute, though, but... He's yeah, like so a those, those are our two... Yeah, he is he is pear shaped. He's bell shaped actually. He's not yeah, pear shaped, bell. he's bell shaped. Yeah, but yeah. I mean those are our two those are our two primary characters. And then we have some some secondary characters. We have Alva, he's this down on her luck school teacher who moved to the town to basically, you know, I'm gonna be a school teacher in this little town. Oh shit, everyone fights each other and it's horrible. I hate it. Mm -hmm. And she's voiced by the lovely Rashida Jones. Who, is, who I love dearly. Oh, uh, she is also just a perfect I casting. It, I know, I love... Because Rashida Jones can be so sassy, but be so mellow about it, which is Alva's entire personality, <laughs> which is just very, very cynical. <laughs> I swear that character was written for Rashida Jones. I know, I love Alva so much. She's so pretty. And some of her original designs were really cute, too. Like, Jesper, they kind of stuck with him. With Klaus, they went through some variances, but her her designs, like, any of her original designs would have worked well. Mm. But I like the one that they stuck with. And she's she's just she's just someone who kind of... who kind of goes through the story, and because Jesper, you know, is, needs the kids to help him with things, she teaches them to learn how to write, which is one of the cutest scenes in the movie. Mm -hmm. The kids make this movie. They're so adorable. They really do and are. <laughs> They're um, so cute. 
Yeah, it they and they're they're voiced by real children, which is, which is great. amazing because that's yeah, so is... rare. You know, it just makes it feel more organic when they're voiced by real kids. Like even if the kids are bad, I would rather the kids be voiced by kids. Yeah. Because like Margu, like Margu, she's a she's a young Sami girl. Like she only speaks in Sami. She doesn't speak anything else. Mm-hmm. And so the little girl who talks for her is speaking in a completely different language. And it's like I don't know if that's like good voice acting or not, yeah. but it's believable because it's a kid. Yeah. You know, you imagine this like this little girl with that voice because it's a child voicing her. Mm-hmm. And it's adorable so and it's, it's bubbly and it, it's bouncy, just like the character is. And it's cute and I love her and she's adorable and I want a little figurine of her that I can hold and protect. <laughs> She's the cutest little thing in the world. Every time Jesper picks her up and holds her, I'm like, that looks like the greatest thing on the planet. Yes. I want to be able to hold this tiny child. She, because he just curls her up in his big hands, and I was like, oh, so cute. I love it. She looks like a little ball of warmth. She is, and she's so cute, and because, and I love that how vibrant her um, outfit is, mm-hmm. which is very, which is how Sami clothing looks, but it's very... It's very cute how vibrant, because when she first comes in, you know, you got all the little Crumb and Ellen Bow kids, and they're all, like, kind of grimy looking, mm-hmm. and they're very muted. They're specifically very muted color palettes, and then when she comes in, that pop of blue and red just immediately is like, this little girl is important. Yes. And it's so sweet, and I love her outfit. And I love all the little designs they had for her, too. Mm-hmm. Some of them were a little more, a little more like realistic, but I'm glad they went with kind of this very kind of like doe-eyed, just little little cotton ball character. Yeah, <laughs> she looks so squishy. <laughs> she visibly fits the role that yeah. she plays in the story. Yeah, yeah. So those, the, I would consider that if you exclude the if you exclude the two clansmen, the clan leaders, those are like the main characters. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, those are the main characters. So it's a really nice cast. Like it's, and the thing that I love the most about this cast is it's, it's just a very good selection of characters, and there's no. There's no, like, oh, he's a guy, so he has to do it, or oh, she's a lady, so she has to do this. Like, it's so just normal and nice, and everyone, like, fits in with each other, and Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's no, like, weird issues with gender, and I was like, oh, thank you, animated movies. Not even Disney can get that shit right. Right. They've been trying for, like, 60 years, and they still can't figure that crap out. Yeah, like, hey, Disney... All you have to do is write a story where your characters are normal. <laughs> it's not hard. It um it really like we keep coming back to this, but the the way the characters interact with each other and the way that they interact as a society in general is very organic. Yeah, like even even though the entire premise of Smurrensburg is that it's two clans fighting each other, the way they act is very organic. Mm-hmm. Like the way everyone like the it's just people fighting each other. It's no there is no like there is nothing else like really to it. And it's yeah. really nice and it's really refreshing just to see a movie that's about a story and really doesn't have any kind of like underlining message. There's nothing forced down your throat. There's no like be good or anything like that. Like I liked that they took all of the um the Santa Claus isms, like the naughty list and the yeah. If you're if you're nice, you get better presents. I like how they did that. I mean, I guess the message you could take yeah. away of is if you're a good, if you do good things, good deeds will be rewarded. Yeah, I mean, there there's literally a a, a moral given in the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. but and it's true. once again it's very basic and it's very organic mm-hmm. it's a mm-hmm. truly selfless act will be followed by another yeah and it's like and I was like is that the only I was like oh my god that's amazing mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have other things shoved down my throat I feel so good yeah like it, it <laughs> it's like going to get a cup of tea and drinking your cup of tea and going wow that was a really good cup of tea and there mm-hmm. was nothing unexpected in it yeah it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, because kind of the, yeah, well, I need the other message. I need the other, the, the arc 
of Jesper is that he goes from being selfish to not being selfish, mm -hmm. but that's pretty much a given. Like, it's no big surprise that he's like, oh, I do, I'm not selfish anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you expect it. It's like you know what's going to happen. There's nothing crazy, but mm -hmm. yeah, other, other than that, I guess there would be... So I guess the secondary characters would be Pumpkin and Olaf, the two kids, the two big kids, mm -hmm. and then you would have the Ellingbow clan leader, and then you would have the Chrome leader, which are two fantastic fucking characters. Like, I love, they're both, um, Will Sasso voices the Ellingbow leader, which I did not realize that. I didn't recognize him at all. And then Joan Cusack, um, voices the, um, the Chrome leader. Yeah, and, and I... Some... I'm oh, sorry, continue. No worries. I did not realize that Joan Cusack was the crumb leader. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I recognized the voice, but I couldn't place it. And I... It was one of those things, like, it didn't bother me enough to look, go and look it up. But as soon as I realized, um, you know, in preparation for this, I was like, oh, oh, of course that was Joan yeah and i i saw a few complaints for this movie because the reason i'm saying this because these two characters are pretty are pretty a, are a part of this complaint a lot of people were saying the dialogue was too modern and i was like no no i love that the dialogue is modern because whenever those two are arguing it is the best mm -hmm. i loved hearing them argue because they're like god you're so stupid shut up Basically proving that their little spat is very childish, that the two leaders of the houses act very childish mm -hmm. when they're together. And I was like, that's so hilarious. I loved it. And it fits Jesper very well because Jesper is kind of a brat. He's trying to be kind of like a modern kid in a weird way. So his dialogue is very modern. But these are the only characters that are like that. Yeah. Like the kids talk like normal kids. I mean, Alpha technically, that she doesn't have really enough dialogue that's to kind of show that she talks modern, like she talks very normally. Yeah, well... And Dad talks like Dad, mm -hmm. and Klaus talks like a very kind of like, kind of like very hermit-like person. So it's like the two characters that... It's like there are two characters in the story that don't talk in a weird, quote-unquote, modern way. <laughs> yeah, but once again, this is, you know, essentially an alternate universe, and so yeah. who knows what time frame it's set in. Yeah, like, it's obviously the aesthetic is, like, 18th centuries, like, um, is, like, mid to early 18th centuries. Like, they might have electricity, they might not. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how the world is, but, so it's, I mean, it's an aesthetic, it's an aesthetic I love, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm immediately like, yes, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I love it because I was like, well, this universe isn't our world, and modernizing dialogue doesn't, can't, it's like if that takes you out of it, then you need to go watch like historical dramas. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, because an, an example I can do of modernized language in a in a historical setting is Red Dead Redemption Two, which is a video game. But in Red Dead, there's a lot of not modernized but easier to understand dialogue. Like if the dialogue in that movie was written like it was from the like the late 1800s no one would understand it mm -hmm. because it's like you know, people back then didn't say like the f word and stuff like that <laughs> right yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't it used wasn't. so they have to modernize yeah. it to give it more of an impact where it makes sense <laughs> yeah and um another another thing like that would be uh the favorite um which also came out in no favorite yeah whatever Anyway, the favorite. It came out in 2017, didn't it? No, no 2018. 2018. It came out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I forget it's 2020 now. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it came out in 2018. I saw it in theaters. It was great. But the point is, they modernized a lot of the dialogue, even though yeah. it was about Queen Anne. One other example of that, and this is the last little nick, is Deadwood. A lot of mm. people like Deadwood. They say the f word like every like 1.3 minutes like someone actually <laughs> timed it and the the writer said why is there so much cursing in this movie we said well because people wouldn't take con sarnet and what in tarnation seriously 
they wouldn't take actual cowboy swears seriously. Yeah. So they had to put, like, big boy swears in there so people would understand the situations. Because, God damn it, was a really bad thing to say back in those days. <laughs> yeah. Which it isn't now. So they're like, okay, they're just going to say fuck every five minutes. <laughs> Pretty much. And this, that's why modernizing dialogue like never really bothers me to a certain extent it never really bothers me because the dialogue in this movie is really i, I keep going back to normal because it is it's very normal it's very organic dialogue mm -hmm. like the way jesper talks you go yeah that's how he would talk you go you look at klaus yeah that's how he would talk you look at dad yeah that's how dad would talk yeah. It's like you look at all the characters and it's like the way that they act and the way they speak and how their voice, because the voice, I get a lot of credit to the voice actors in this movie. It, 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 it helps, you know, it helps solidify that that modernizing is okay, because a lot of people need to stop thinking that historical things set in a historical quote unquote time period needs to have that level of dialogue because Guess what? Little Billy ain't gonna watch this movie if it's in, like, 18th century dialogue. <laughs> and it's gonna be really boring to write, and it's not gonna be fun. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> people weren't fun back then. <laughs> yeah. So, um... So, yeah, it... The movie has really, really strong, um... color direction. Mm, yes, the color direction. <laughs> and it's interesting because, you know, so many, and you can look at our Instagram for this, um, KT actually did, like, a, a breakdown um, of color palettes in various scenes. But I did need a few palettes. Yeah, and you can look at them, um, and it's all, with the exception of the Sami, it's all very muted colors. Mm -hmm. But... The colors are used so well that they just come across strong. Oh yeah, the color theory in this movie is ridiculous. Is exceptionally good. Like, um, I can kind. Of, I'm gonna kind of use this nudie as like a as like a soapbox to, for a minute to kind of bash on 3D animator, <laughs> like 3D animated movies. One of the biggest things that Disney and a lot of companies said the reason they don't do 2D animation anymore is because they didn't think they could get stuff to look as as organic and as real mm -hmm. as they could in 3D. And so this is why you just have so many just ugly 3D movies from a lot of those companies in the early years. Like, I mean, except with the picture, the, the, except with, with the exception of Pixar, because Pixar always makes the best movies with the technology they have at the time. Mm -hmm. So, with the exception of Pixar, DreamWorks, in-house Disney, and, like, all these companies were making these 3D movies because they're like, well, that's what everyone wants now. And this movie, with the exception of a few elements, is completely 2D. It's done entirely... It's done... It's. I mean, you can see the pencil test. There's light action tests for it, which, I mean, those are in 3D as well, but... It's done entirely in 2D. It's all done on ones, so it's very fluid. I don't know. I don't know if it's a 30 frame movie or if it's a 24 frame movie. It looks like it's 30. So there's a lot of work that went into this movie. But a lot of people are like, "Well, how do you color it? How do you make a 2D movie look good?" It's like this is why a lot of Disney movies are flat. And this movie managed to take 2D and basically shade it and light it and do everything. To where it looks like a 3D movie, where it looks like every single screenshot looks like a concept art. Yeah. It looks like a, con a piece of concept art that someone took, like, like three hours coloring. But that's just how the movie moves. The whole movie looks like concept art, and so because of that, it's colored like that. Like, this is... This movie is what I have always wanted, because when I look at animation in gaming... I always love the concepts more than I do the final product, and I finally have a movie that is literally what I love in, like, animation form. It's the concept art 
moving <laughs> and it's fucking brilliant mm -hmm. and that's why i love it that's why i love this movie because any single picture i look at that's a concept can be very well realized within the actual movie because of the way it's lighted the way it's done and i god i hope other co other companies will learn from this movie and not make shitty versions of this movie <laughs> <laughs> because it's just oh I had to say that. Like, yeah. that's. I finally sat down and realized why I like this movie so much. And it's because of my love of conceptual art, you know, actually making it to the screen yeah. has been fully realized. So. See, and, and one of the reasons that I, I love this movie so much, um, when I dislike a lot of animation, um is that the mouths move pretty organically. You, the, 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 the third time or the half time I watched this movie, I watched it in silence. I had it muted, mm -hmm. and I could keep up with the story. And I can't read lips, but I could keep up with the dialogue for the most part yeah. because the mouth flaps are so well animated. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, that's something that, job with that I have an auditory processing disorder and now I'm like losing hearing in one of my ears. And so, you know, being able to watch it, I didn't even realize until about a third of the way into the movie that I didn't have subtitles on. And that's unheard of mm -hmm. for me with an animated film. Yeah. Yeah, it just... <laughs> Some of the scenes, like one of my, one of my favorite scenes in it is at the very beginning, if we're talking about like animation and lighting, is at the very beginning after Jester's called into um his dad's office and his dad is like he's like Jester is gonna like turn around, he's like, Oh darn, time to go home. And his dad's like, You stop right there, and he turns around and he goes, No, Dad, when will I learn to grow up? And that whole scene of him having his little like pedantic tantrum is like his little like sarcastic tantrum like i love re-watching that scene over and over again because of the way he moves like i would just if you're an animation student just watch this movie and put it on silent and just pay attention to everything just pay attention to all the animations you can go on instagram you can go on like youtube and find the artists like pencil tests which are really good to watch because this nudie does have a lot of like heavy lighting and shading in it sometimes you can't make out all the lines but when you go look at those pencil tests you can really appreciate like how much work went into this movie <laughs> like it's ridiculous some of the smears in this movie oh my god they're like elder horrors they look amazing <laughs> there's like one i got hopefully i can find it i think i have it on instagram but it's during the belt that whenever um, Jesper rings the bell in the middle of town and he's just like freaking out and he looks he looks both directions really quickly the middle smear is like four different faces oh that's amazing <laughs> yeah it's so messed up but <laughs> I love it so much I love when smears just look like like beings from another dimension that's how you know they're good because those are the things that trick your brain into making things look fluid it's basically one of those things. It's like you're, it's like you didn't notice it, but your brain did. Yep. <laughs> and also, the other thing your brain notices that you don't notice is subsurface. This movie has subsurface scattering in it, which I have never seen an animated movie have subsurface scattering in it. <laughs> if you don't know what subsurface scattering it is, it is mostly a thing used by 3D artists, but it is when light bounces off the skin and you see a pinkish hue because your skin is actually transparent. <laughs> and this movie has subsurface, which is ridiculous. <laughs> That is ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous that this movie has some circuits in it, because their eyes, their, like, their little ears glow, and their little hands will glow sometimes, and I was like, why, gay? I was like, why, movie? Why? <laughs> 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 why did you do that to me? I'm so obsessed with subsurface. <laughs> because it really is the different... Subsurface is really what makes lighting on people look real. Like, you don't ever think about it. Yeah. But when you look at two images... Like when we when we talk about something else completely, like if we ever do a video on like on like a on like a certain game, I'm not gonna say what the game is, but if if I take like a, if I like took a picture 
of something that was just a 3D image that was flat lit and then took an image that was had like proper like subsurface lighting, that's the one that you would say would look more real. Because that's what your because that's the thing that your brain looks at that makes things look real that you don't notice mm. because it's so normal in normal life. Yeah. So like when you're an artist and you're learning how to like render things out and do lighting and shading, you have to learn these things because you're so used to it visually that your brain never thinks about it. That makes it's sense. the reason. Yeah, it's the reason when I tell artists to never use black when they're shading. I was like, never use black. And they're like, well, why aren't shadows black? I said, no, shadows are not black. They're blue, they're green, they're dark purple, they're brown. Never use black. And this movie never does that. I don't think there's any black in this movie, except maybe the lines, if you can, if they're not, if they're not rendered out. This movie just, the color in this movie is the best. Like, it's... I could. This is the reason I've rewatched this movie so many times, or I've skinned through it, is because I love looking at the color, and I'm currently using it as my ability to learn coloring again. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm so bad at it digitally, but it's just, uh, and it makes me cry. See, this is what it does. It tricks your brain. That's why lighting's important, and yeah. people don't ever think about it. <laughs> lighting's important. You gotta learn to trick the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like lighting. Lighting and motion, the two easiest ways to trick the human brain. Yeah. Um, so, in a lot of animated films, music is a huge, huge, huge factor, even the ones mm -hmm. that are not a, um, a musical. Yeah, and, thank God this isn't a musical. Yeah, this would be a horrible musical. But yes, it would, and it would make me so sick. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty mu movie, why are you musical? <laughs> But, um, I'm gonna be honest, I, I did not really notice the music. I knew that it was there, but it also felt organic. Yeah. So you mean in, like, a good way. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't... It didn't take away yeah. from the scene. It didn't take yeah. me away from the scene. It, it was there, and it could have easily been something playing in the background of the scene rather than being something made for the scene if that makes are sense are you telling me xander you liked the postman hip-hop bit the no. bit that people really hate oh you I didn't forgot. like that i, lo I forgot about the postman <laughs> hip hop. i love that scene <laughs> I think I'm the only one. I think I'm the only critical person of this movie that likes that scene, or likes that that musical bit. <laughs> I I think I blocked that part out of my brain to be honest, because oh, no. I it, for a second I was like, "What are you talking, Postman Hip Hop?" And then like the Postman Hip Hop bit. Don't mess with the Postman. Yeah, <laughs> and so then cute. and then I had a flashback, <laughs> and no, I did not like that scene. Everything oh, else God. musically. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, can I defend that scene for a minute then? <laughs> go right ahead, because I had to pause and go and get tea. Because it fits Jesper's character. Yeah. That's exactly why. He had such a swagger about him. It's like, what else are you going to put there? You can't put like some Sergio Leone, like, like Italian guitar in there. You got to put something dumb. Something that would be really egocentric, and because Jesper has such an ego about himself, that's how he would feel. He'd be like, yeah, don't mess with me, I'm cool. And he just swaggers away. <laughs> He's like, I got to be, I got to tell a little kid he was an asshole, I'm the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> it's just him picking on kids. <laughs> And they also did the the connotations of the drug <laughs> the drug dealing <laughs> with the letters. Yes. Hey, you guys want some, you guys want some toys? And I was like, that's fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. That's why the culmination of the scenes beforehand, up until the scene where he's selling the bully, you know, like, hey, he's got a naughty list, and you're gonna be on it. And he scares that little kid, yeah. and it's like, yeah, cool. <laughs> he walks away. I was like, that's so dumb. I love it. <laughs> It's so dumb. I love it because it, it like it didn't bother me in the slight. I was kind of like pulled back because it is 
it is very modernized music in a setting like this, but I was like, oh no, I get it. I get what you're doing. A lot of the stuff in this movie is very deliberate. Nothing really seems... Mm -hmm. Nothing really seems like it just kind of happened because they needed it to happen. Yeah. It's everything is deliberate. It, it's weird to say. It's like a Tarantino movie. <laughs> everything is deliberate. Like, it's exactly what it needed to be. <laughs> it, you're not wrong. It's, yeah. It's like, a, or like, oh, no, okay, I'll use, a Wes, I'll use Wes Anderson. This movie is like if Wes Anderson did an animated Christmas movie. Okay, yes. It's, you know, not like Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> it, I was like mm. okay it's more like Wes Anderson like, okay. he's a more wholesome director <laughs> uh, yeah I can I, I love Tarantino sometimes he could never make this movie Wes could make this movie but the thing that I love the most about this movie is it doesn't pander it's not a lowest common denominator it's not a kids movie mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a proper, normal, animated movie that everyone can enjoy. Yeah, there isn't a single moment that I had a groan because it was just for the kids. Um, or it was like a really dumb number where it's like, oh, look at the man do the silly dance and yeah. like trying to just distract kids. Like the pacing in this movie is very normal. Mm -hmm. It's a very organic, normal pacing. There isn't like a joke every five seconds to keep everyone like keep everyone entertained. It has a lot of really slow moments. Right. And most of the like jokes that are there are subtle enough that Honestly, adults are probably going to understand and enjoy this better than the kids, but the kids will still like it. The kids will enjoy Jesper's goofiness. Mm -hmm. The kids will see him being really bouncy and really, like, really, like, silly and kind of just, like, really, really goofy, and they'll they'll enjoy that. Yeah. And they'll, they'll, I guarantee you kids will enjoy this movie visually, too, because it is so stimulating. Like, it's so visually stimulating. Like, there's a lot of muted colors in it, but they use color very effectively to make it to where it's still, like, really vibrant. Mm -hmm. So kids will enjoy it, like, on a color way. Because I remember... Because I remember when I was a kiddo, and I love really colorful movies. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, my little brain! So much stimulation! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, I guess we could get to the pacing part, since we're kind of getting into that. I could wail for hours about character design and color but to be honest if you really want to see like more of the character design just go you can go to instagram you can go to youtube um the guy who did the character designs who i'm gonna butcher his poor name but it's like torsten shrank or something like that or shrunk mm -hmm. it's s-c-h-r-i-n-k he has a website and he has all of the character like concept art on there. There was an art book that existed for about five minutes and then disappeared into the ether. So you can't, I wish I had that art book. It's so fucking pretty, but, but yeah, like it, it, you're, if you're an animation student, please study this movie. If you're a cinema student, please study this movie for lighting, for how you do lighting and how you can do really vibrant lighting and like really good color design because you can do color like this in a tr in a in a physical movie. I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. It just looks really nice in this movie. <laughs> but I mean, pacing. I mean, so what were your issues you had with the third act then? Like, because my opinion on that has changed. So I guess do yours first, and then I'll add into mine. So the the third act felt a lot like a bunch of dots um, with very few lines connecting them. So it's mm -hmm. like going to play connect the dots and there's just there's all these dots all over the page and they're not numbered. A few of them have lines connecting them, but otherwise it's dots. And they're attractive dots. <laughs> but you don't know how they connect necessarily. It's a sexy dot. You know, I mean, hey, that it's it's nice and round. It's ample. <laughs> it's ample. <laughs> no one knows what that word means. <laughs> hey, I'm allowed to use my words. <laughs> 
Um, but, but yeah, like at, at the end, I was able to look back and go, okay, so that was dot one, two, three, four. That's where these two already connected, you know, but it, the, the ending didn't feel like it came out of nowhere. It was just that the events between the second act ending and the third act ending weren't immediately connectable it it essentially there was a time skip and they didn't do a very good job explaining that there was a time skip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the biggest that's the biggest issue like they say like dad says that he has a year but we don't know what what time of the year it is like we don't know if it's summer we know that mogan says that it's not spring but i mean i'm not gonna look that deep into the into the story so essentially there's a time skip we don't know what happens there's a lot of little different things that do happen and just for an alpha get together but we never actually see that happen which mm -hmm. i wish we had like if they had in if they had began the third act on those two actually getting together then i'll be like oh okay because you know she's going to be the love interest because it's a simple story, right. but we don't see them get together, and I was really confused by that. And I was like, oh, hold on, wait, we just skipped that part, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'd only need a like, two minutes movie. You could have done that whole scene in two minutes. You really could have. And that, that was and, my only issue. Yeah, but the second time you watch it, because you know they do, it that little bit doesn't bother me as much, because like I said, the second time I watched it, the movie seemed to slow down a little. It seemed it a little easier to take everything in because you weren't having to take in new information. Yeah. So watching it a second time, I hope the only thing and my only complaint with this movie is it has the oh you were a bad person all the time now we hate you trope and I was like no yeah <laughs> I hate that trope it's so dumb. It's, I, I don't hate it as much, I don't hate it as much as the, we have an argument at the beginning of the third act, so now we hate each other. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's not as bad as that trope, which I hate, but it did have the now we hate you thing. I really wish the third act had been, like, Jesper going back up to Klaus's, but Dad ends up showing up in town. Mm -hmm. And so he ends up having a conversation with Dad... And so Jester's like, no, but I like it here. You know, I learned my lesson. You know, I've become a person and I thank you for what you did. Yeah. And then they have the moment where they hug because dad can see like, well, why would you want to stay here? I don't understand. I mean, it's a crummy little town and he sees how nice the town is, how happy everyone is. And he's like, wow, son, you actually did some good. Yep. So then, so um, Ellingbo and Crumb realize that getting dad didn't work. So then they decide... Like, as Jesper's going up, they decide some way to, like, like foil him for a moment. And Margu's like, oh, no, where's Jesper? And she goes and finds him. And so the mm -hmm. two of them are talking. And then you basically just have the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. See, and it... But just change that one little, like, five-minute scene. Instead of it being like, oh, now he hates you. Just make it, oh, Dad, I just, you know, I want to stay here. I like it here. And it would have been a very cute, it would have been very cute way of like you know tying up the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. because he is such a brat to his dad and then you know dad being like well i'm proud of you now because you're you're the kid i remember you you're not a brat anymore yeah and then it would have made the real villains of the movie you know it would have made that make a lot more sense because crumb and ellen Bo are the villains of the movie so that's how I wish it had ended. That would have been so much nicer. It would have had a better feel good. It would have made, it would have made a lot of the, I mean, you could still have done the ending the same way. You just have to slightly change it. And it wouldn't have been that big of a change. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that that's really the only issue that I had with the pacing. And, mm -hmm. and even that is mostly like, we have to have something to critique when we, when we mm -hmm. do these. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't it didn't explicitly take away from my enjoyment of the movie. Um it just I was like, okay, lots of things happening. Where is it leading? And then okay, it led here. I guess that makes sense. 
And that was, in my opinion, this movie's only weak point was its third act. The beginning of the third act. Yeah, the beginning of the third Cause, act. Because the, the, the second half of the third act and the epilogue are actually really good. The epilogue is very sweet. Oh, the epilogue is so cute. Oh, I didn't cry. <laughs> I didn't cry the first time, but I cried a second time. <laughs> because the very last line of the movie, I'm like, how can you not cry the second time you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Just her says, now I get to see my friend, and I'm like, ah, oh, tears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tears, I must be professional. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, I have a few technical things that I, <laughs> I actually found some character pop-ins. <laughs> the scene where Jesper is getting on the boat and Mogens is talking, Dad will pop in. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> and they're just like, how did you see those? I was like, because I see things. <laughs> you see things I mean, the... and you hear voices. I see things and I hear voices. So anyway, we already talked about voice acting. I do want to give a lot of credit to the Foley work in this movie because mm -hmm. again, I d d it solid. It's solid Foley work. Oh, like yeah. it's it's so rare to watch an animated movie these days where the Foley work is this organic. Like even with the rubber like rubber band sounds and like all the goofier sounds, like it worked. Yeah. Like all the sound design in this movie is so good. Like even like little subtle movements like if someone just kind of like stepping or like moving or bending down there's there's a piece of sound to it mm -hmm. and it's so nice it's like playing a game because games have always had some of the best foley work also how why during during some of the scenes when there's subtle effects in the environment like when snow's being moved around or when Jesper puts his hands to the window and then pulls them away, it leaves the indentation of where his hands warmed the window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes indentations in the snow, and I was like, how? Why? <laughs> why did you touch so... I was like, why did you care about that one thing? But it just, it's... God, <laughs> it makes me so happy. Yeah, it was very definitely <laughs> a, um, a labor of love. Yes, there's so much love put into this movie. There's so much love. There's so much love put into the characters. Like, I applaud all of the actor, I mean, not all the animators, the head animators, like, the leader of each character. Like, I think the guy, I think Mogens was done by one guy. And I was like, and I was like, that's, oh, that's amazing. That means you got to make this character his character. And it's just, ah. Yep. <laughs> I can't. I can't, I'm going to keep talking about it, like, all day, because it's just, <laughs> the one thing I can recommend to people is, please go check out, like, the Netflix YouTube and the Spa Studios YouTube and, like, Instagram and wherever they have other things and just watch all the stuff, you know, the pencil tests, because all the animators are posting their pencil tests now. Okay. And, you know, going, going to Netflix and watching, you know, because they have, like, an eight-minute, like, video about, like, the character designs. Because this is how I knew that Jesper was a throwaway. and But how they ended up just wanting to keep him. It's like, yeah, I would just, I would go watch those and just kind of, like, show a little, a little, a little support anywhere you can. And please watch this movie on Netflix. Like, I've told anyone who's asked me, like, where are these characters from? I was like, Klaus, watch it. It's good. <laughs> Like, I don't say nothing else, I just tell them to watch it. Yeah, so just do that. Try to, su please support this studio. Yeah. Please, we need more 2D animation back that is good, mm -hmm. that is on par, if not, like, better than Disney. Because this movie is an hour and 38 minutes long. It's a long movie. Yeah, and it doesn't it's like an hour it. and, or It's like an hour and 30, I would say, you know, without the credits. Yeah, and it doesn't feel long. So, closing thoughts? I mean, just go watch it. That's all I can say. Watch it. Just just watch it. If you're an animation student, watch it. Watch it two or three times. I mean, you can learn a lot from this movie. Watch it on silent, because you can learn a lot by just, you know, taking in the visual versions of it, the visual aspect of it. I mean, if you enjoy, like, animated movies, watch it. If you enjoy, like, cinema, watch it, because it is very well done. In terms of like lighting and effects and camera work, like a lot of the camera work in this movie is very natural. Yeah, it is. Like a lot of it felt really like natural, like it was a proper camera. There wasn't any of them weird like flying rig cameras that don't make any sense. Are you talking about cranes? 
No, not cranes, but there's a lot of 3D movies that'll just have the uh, camera anywhere. Yeah. Like, the camera, like, anytime, like, there's a shot, like, the camera feels like it could tangibly, tan tangibly be in the scene. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like it could be on a shoulder or on a tripod or on a crane. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the camera work in this movie does feel like that, which is interesting because it's an animated movie, and animated movies don't really do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any issues with the camera in this movie, and I always had issues with the camera. There's no awful cuts. This is why doing 2D animated films is such a good idea, because you have to compose your scenes properly. <laughs> it's, what's, it's what makes Into the Spider-Verse so good, because it uses 2D um, fundamentals, so it has to be composed properly. It has to be composited properly. <laughs> True. Yeah, so I guess closing thoughts are just watch it. I would have to agree. Um, and it's, you know, yes, it's a holiday movie, but it's... It's not bro beating the holidays, so no, you can watch no. it a little bit late and not feel like an asshole. It's a very cozy, like very. It's a wintertime movie. It's very cozy, mm -hmm. but you can you can watch it any time because the Christmassy stuff really doesn't kick in until like the very end of the movie. So it's very much just a. It's a cold. It, it's cold in this movie, so <laughs> this like gives you the crease Missy feels. Yeah, yeah. So I guess um, we do. We do still have um, we do still have the Patreon because that's where the audio version of this is going to be uploaded. So it's Jaded Phoenix Studios everywhere. But we do have an Instagram now, as Xander pointed out earlier. I'm going to be in charge of that, so I will be posting all things visual on there. It has a link to the Patreon, so you can get other content. We are going to be putting these on the YouTube. Obviously, that the YouTube will have other things. So. Um, if you really want to, if you really want to get kind of like the visual essays of what we do in these in these um, podcasts, please follow Instagram. That will have like palettes, like the color palettes that I'm doing. I'm having a lot of fun with those. Those are going to be really fun exercises, and it'll put. I'll have like thumbnails for the new videos, and if you're the best way, the best place to follow at the moment would be Patreon. You do not have to be a patron, but it is the best place to get access to everything because everything will be linked on there. Yeah. You can follow me on Cronerathax Everything. Uh, my primary is Instagram. I have a YouTube that I post some of my stuff on. I also have a Patreon. But with that Patreon, you do have to be a patron to get access to what it provides. I have Coneracomics.com or Coneracomics.wordpress.com. I also have the Conera Comics Instagram. And do you want to plug your Instagram? I mean, you don't really use it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, might as well. It's Xander Frey, right? <laughs> yeah, Xander Frey at Instagram.com. But if you go to the Jaded Phoenix Studios Instagram, you'll see he and I in yeah. the in the in the bio at the up at the top. And there's nothing on there at the moment. I mean, hopefully there is by the time this comes out, but if not, there will be stuff shortly after. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of like, that's, I'm dating, dating, quote unquote, the, the video, but it doesn't matter. So, yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy this. This is also a part of my, my KT's 50 movies in a year thing. So this video will also be up on my website. Not all of our, on my Instagram, or YouTube, not all of ours will be, but this one will be specifically. So anytime we I put it up on Patreon or something, it will say this is also a part of KT's 50 movie list, which I'm slowly getting through. Like, I have to pick the third movie now. And we're not we're doing a lot of movies off of that list, but we're obviously not doing the second one. So we're going to have to pick another movie to talk about. OK. All righty. So All right. I guess, well, all right. thanks as always for listening. Have a good life. All right, y'all have a good one.